Greetings, everyone. You finally made it to the Ticketmaster. <laughs> it's been oh. 3,000 years. I, according to Ryan, there will be no no more random faffing about like that. I hope he holds true to that, because... <laughs> We're just getting started. <laughs> 70 parts to go. <laughs> you I can... like how every time that you, 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 talk, you ask this guy a question, he goes off on a tangent, and then you just have this option to say... Just answer the fucking question. <laughs> Why? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. Other little detail here that you can you can find out something's wrong with your ticket as early as going into your menu and checking the key items. Because before you get here, you, you, if you talk to NPCs, you can get an idea of the name of the players. I want to be your canary. If you check your ticket in the key items, it's your ticket's label, I want to be your crow. Oh. Um, Alright, so... Do we ever get any context as to why Vivi's here or why he has the ticket? Uh, no. Oh. Uh, he was he was sold the ticket. He, he wanted to go see a show. He kind of lives on his own, so. Yeah. Okay. D- did he live uh, in Alexandria? Um, no, he, uh, he no. actually lives he, in this he ca- sort of cave um, that you can get to later on as an optional area. Oh, okay. All right. I uh, guess I'll I'll, yeah. I'll see that when I'm playing later. Yeah. Uh, it, you'll you'll find out about it as you go. I think it's a disc two thing though. Oh man! I think you, I think you could do it as early as disc two. Dante yeah. the sign yeah. maker. Wow! Devil May Cry really went downhill. <laughs> Everybody starts somewhere. Wow, Dante, you really you know overate the pizza. You, you literally turned into a hippo. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're a sign maker. Now go play uh, jump rope, you fat hello, fuck. Hello, puck. Uh, you know, I said no. I don't want to be your slave. And then he just ran away, and I was like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I sure showed him. This is this is a but thou must situation, but you know, you ha- if if you say no, you have to leave and then come back. You can't progress unless you. Uh, you're, oh, not hi, gonna talk, you're not going to talk. You're not going to talk to yeah. Gilgamesh. Just go ignore the forearm man. <laughs> Wait, his real yeah. name is Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you don't find that out. Uh, super spoiler warning until you like do something really great with like the cards or something. Uh, you have to open up every single treasure chest in the game. Oh, that's right. Wait, every really? treasure chest. In, yeah, every treasure chest in the game, and then you find him somewhere, and he tell he tells you his real name. It's Gilgamesh. Oh, because Final which, Final if you're a Final Fantasy aficionado, you kind of already figured that. Well, Gilgamesh yeah. was only in Final Fantasy V, right? Or is he in other games? Moogles! Uh, Gilgamesh appears as a summon in Final Fantasy VIII, oh. but not as a regular summon. Um, if you if you get Odin before you fight Cypher in, at the end of Disc 3, Cypher will just one-hit kill Odin when Odin tries to kill him. And he, like, literally, vertically slices Odin in half. So, you know... Um, and then a at the end of the battle, th- this is the weirdest fucking way for a cameo summon to show up, because this is the final time you fight Cypher in the game, but at the end of the battle, Gilgamesh will just appear and blow Cypher away. Okay, so and- the, the, the Moogle crap. If I just check Magnet with every Moogle I save at, I should be good, right? Yes. Until you get to, until you get to disc 4, yes. Okay. Yeah. If, as long as you remember, it's a little weird. That's actually a, a bit of a sticking point I have against Magna. Is that sometimes you need to read the letter twice? Oh, I already know. Not- I noticed that because I read it and then I was like, "Oh, you didn't give me a letter back," so I read it again and then I got something. Yeah, then he asked for a favor. It, that is a sticking point I have against that system. Uh, but yeah, if you, you you got the right mentality. As long as you keep asking every Moogle you run into about Magna, then you should be able to get all the letters oh, delivered. Oh man, that that reminds me of Fantasy Star One. For a lot of the quest triggers, you need to talk to the same person twice or three times even to get all the information you need. And it, it's especially it's especially jarring in the remake because they didn't account for it when they set their quest flags for what your characters will say when you talk to your party. So let's say we'll have to do we'll have to go talk to this person person about cake before you've actually been told to talk to this person about cake <laughs> forgot to assign slots uh, yeah. i'm sorry do you have to trade paperback uh, you know, <laughs> like, I, this, this shit's heavy actually you know that, that i've probably talked about this before but when i've played a lot of rpgs before i think it was uh tales of the abyss was the most recent example of this where like i just i talked to each npc once and then i accidentally talked to an npc twice by mashing the a button too fast and then, oh, looks like every NPC in the game has two lines of dialogue instead of just one. Oh, looks like I just missed out on half of the NPC dialogue for the first five hours of the game. Okay, whatever. Better restart. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I'm, not, I'm not that needy, but... Yeah. But you know, the Fantasy Star remake, that 
it, it's a real problem that 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 your characters will tell you to do things before you find out from other characters because when you find out from other characters is when the quest flag actually triggers. So for like half an hour, I was running around Fantasy Star. Um, trying to figure out why this person I was supposed to be talking to uh, wouldn't tell me about cake. So <laughs> what, wound up, what wound up happening was, uh, oh, oh, yeah, you can't go back now. Nope. So Point of no return. Hope you got your bomb card. Hope you jumped roped a lot of times because you're not For some back. reason, people hide money in their chimneys in this town. I don't understand why. <laughs> well, but, the chimneys uh, are where a lot of the commoners watch the play. Yeah. Anyway... Now we this can is name our BB. characters. You remember those? You remember the days before voice acting when you could name your characters? Uh, well, you can. Na- I'm pretty <laughs> sure you can name your characters in Bravely Default, even though they have um, voice acting, which is it, it's been they, about a year. Don't they have? Don't they have voice acting for like very specific scenes? They though? have voice acting for ev- almost every scene except for the, um, hmm. except for the like the the little optional kind of. So, like so, the, every, every, so like everyone's the active like time scenes in this. So, there. So cool like ones. everyone, everyone like me. Everyone in the world is like me at a party. They're just too socially awkward to call anyone by their name. So they just go, "Hey, hey, you," hey with you. a with a hat. <laughs> you know. I just uh, I can't I can't remember very I can't remember very clearly because I played Bravely Default like a year ago, and I know that's not like that long, but it's a long enough that I don't really remember the 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 specifics. Um, yeah, the only thing that comes to mind is Murgiger. Murgiger. <laughs> <laughs> and now that we've made it to the now that we made it to the play, we're gonna switch back to Zidane. Does that At, does that rat kid ever come back? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I think you need to get to the end of disc one. Uh, yeah, he's, he's at the end of he's at the end of disc one. Yeah, I don't want to I don't want to spoil it for you since you don't remember. But he has some significance, and by some significance, I mean he's not really important, but he's sort of there, and there's a background subplot going on with him, but. Nothing ever well, really happens front front row center with that. It's just sort of a background world thing. Well, I mean, oh god. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there, there's clown this, people. There's I, clown the, people in this world. There's this. There's this like really big obsession with Queen Bronn being ugly as sin in this game, and that and, and that supposedly being an indicator for Princess Garnet being abducted. Uh, not no abdo- adopted, not abducted. <laughs> but, uh, she's just so she's so ugly. I'm doing you a favor. Come but with he, me. But here's the thing: the reason Princess, the, the reason the Queen and the King uh, adopted Princess Garnet in the first place was because she looked exactly like their dead baby. So presumably, it, their natural child would have been just as pretty when she grew up. So not really, you know, a big thing there. I mean, just imagine if their natural child had grown up like this and had to deal with people telling her that she was probably adopted because <laughs> she was pretty and her mother wasn't. <laughs> But yeah, when everyone saw Queen Queen Bronn the first time, she, the first time the screenshots were unveiled, it was like Queen Amidala before the liposuction. That was the exact <laughs> tagline I remember being before the. Uh, oh, being, I never being heard that. But, uh, in the magazine, but I never heard uh, that. It was. Yeah. It, it was. It, I think it was. Uh, it's one of those gaming magazines that defunct now. I don't even remember which one it is. Uh, electronic EPM. Monthly? Electronic Gaming Monthly. EGM two. It might be that, but I, I don't think so. I think it might be something else. Game Pro. Yeah, that's the one. Game Pro. It was yeah. Game Pro. It was definitely Game Pro. I got Game Pro a lot when I was younger. So did I. You know. But, um, what? Okay, go ahead, Tiger. Uh, well, it's just like the the beginning of this game is very unorthodox. Uh, it's actually quite unlike almost every other RPG I've played. But I really, you know, the the foul thing about with VB, I was a little bit kind of lost. But I really like this play sequence a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what, that's actually a good transition to what I was about to ask you. Cause, you know, because Ted, we've been egging you on yeah. as a person who likes your oh, because I, I take it. Correct me if I'm wrong. You like your RPGs that are lighthearted that have a sense of humor. Um, at least, at, at least some comic relief here. here and yes, there. like, like I don't uh, wanna... an RPG that can tell you a joke. Yeah. <laughs> Ba- yeah, okay. Basically, I really, I really liked this this play segment a lot. I would have, act- I think, I might have actually liked it better if they started with this and not necessarily with VV's faffing about. But um, you know, uh, it's not. But from what you've played so far, like, what do you think of Nine? Um, it's good. It's just I'm spoiled by newer games. Is is mostly <laughs> is mostly yeah. the things like um, like this game. It's actually you know, uh, 
graphical style, it's just basically a more primitive Bravely Default, because Bravely Default does the same thing in the overworld with the pre-rendered backgrounds, except in that game they're really pretty, and in this game they're very PS1. <laughs> um, yeah, they're, they're low res. And, you know, that, like, I have a problem. lot of little nitpicks, like, you know, the it takes a while for battles to load, and that's just... Yeah. Yeah. I also, but I, I love the music, like, I, this this track here that plays when you're fighting during the, the play, I, I love this track. Um, well, this, is one, this is one of uh, Uematsu's favorite games to work yeah, on. Yeah, I think it's, um, I think he said in an interview that 9 is his favorite soundtrack that he's ever yeah. worked on. Well, here, here's the thing about, uh, about about Final Fantasy soundtracks. A lot of them try to be serious in anime, and that results in you know, Uematsu having to do a serious and anime music, uh soundtrack for the game like final fantasy 8 i love some of the tracks in that but by god is the soundtrack on on the whole really dry because it's trying to keep a serious tone all the way through it and does have a lot of winners like, though yeah and, damn it Cinna, why do you always like, miss <laughs> this is Cinna does miss a lot you know <laughs> Cinna is your steel bitch it should be nothing but yeah. yeah, but there's nothing to steal in this sequence. You can, do, you you can have them do fireworks. You, you, <laughs> yeah, you do pyro. Yeah, you can't even do... Yeah, you can do, like, uh, special effects. SFX is the the, the command prompt. But and they do nothing. Yeah. They're, but they they're, make they're, the show they're, better they're, for the audience, right? Yeah. You need yeah. to yeah. make that it nothing, that doesn't, <laughs> like, It's like the, the king could summon disco balls. Yeah, but you know, I, I, whenever I play this game, I do the special effect attacks anyway, purely yeah. for the fuck of it, because they yeah. look nice. Because you're in a play, you're being watched. Yeah, and, and you know, there's no way. There, I'm in no danger of losing this fight, so I just, you know, I go with it. Oh, you were talking about tracks I absolutely love. This is Fama Aflamanco. This is well, this will primarily be known as the cho <laughs> the Chocobo ho Hot and Cold theme. But yeah, I, wonder, I, I wonder if that was in the script that they just run past Marcus so fast he twirls around. <laughs> Uh, this was a mini game, like, the, the jump rope, I just could not figure out the timing for the life of me. I actually did play this uh, sword mini game a good three or four times just because I was having fun with it and I wanted to get a better score. But then I remembered... Did you get, all, did you get all 100 nobles? <laughs> uh, no, I think I got 91 was my best. And I impressed Korean Brown, so, yeah. Yeah, the, 90, the, the rank of 90 to, like, 96, I think, is what you're going to get if you hit all the button prompts correctly and at a decent pace, but getting all 100 nobles... Impressed is pretty fucking hard. Can you and all you get is a piece of equipment that you're gonna get later in this disc anyway. Uh, there is a all right. So if you if you rank between 90 to like 96, um, and you talk to Queen Braun as soon as Steiner is in control, you get a you get a silk shirt or a silk yeah, you're skirt. Just gonna, you're, you're just gonna get that later anyway. Does so. it uh, come equipped with that? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. But you can also give it to Vivi so he can learn, I believe, Thunder. That's actually what I did uh, as soon as I got that. I, I swapped their I swapped their, their outfits. It's just yeah. like, <laughs> hey, 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 Princess Garnet, you can wear this old smelly thing. Hey, Vivi, wear this if, dress. <laughs> if you impress all 100 noblemen and talk to Queen Brown, you get a Moonstone. Uh, so not that Moonstone. No, you, you can't evolve your Jigglypuff. No, oh. not that Moonstone. <laughs> oh, because uh, I didn't actually talk to, 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 to Queen... Wait, hold on. I... I... I think, actually, I did talk to Queen Braun with uh, Steiner, but I got a 91, and then I did it again and got a war score, and then I, I just left. So does that have to be the last score you have? Yeah, it's, a, it's the last score you get. Okay, so that, that's that's the That's the only int it says. Okay. A Moonstone teaches you the abilities Beast Killer and Shell. I got so, but you're, you're Well, well you, have if you, if you have to equip them and then learn them eventually. Oh, but, is yeah. it a ring uh, item? Uh, yes, I believe so. Okay. Yes, it is an accessory. So uh, shell early in the game is pretty nifty. Uh, shell. Final yeah, but the beast, beast killer, you're gonna get tons of stuff that will teach anyway. Yeah. So it's not terrible. It's not the most useful thing in the world. It's nice to have if you can do it, but yeah. Well, there are a lot of other things that give you beast killer. So yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, I was gonna say something, but it just slipped my mind. Uh, but you're so oh, captivated Cornelia. by the play. Cornelia. That's that's another reference I didn't get when I first played this game. Is that but it's actually the sound it's actually the name of the first town in Final Fantasy 1 and the name of the princess you rescue at the beginning of that game. Oh, this yeah, place so sucks. The first line should have been welcome to Cornelia. <laughs> no, <laughs> welcome to Cornelia. <laughs> no, it's Cornelia, damn it. <laughs> because that's, <laughs> that's what it was, that's yeah. what it was in Japan. Yeah. Oh, you're setting the battle no, speed no, is no, fast. No, wow. it, no, you, you say that's what it was in Japan. No, it's just like, it's the LNR thing. Yeah, that's, yeah. I, that's what I was joking. Ryan, you didn't equip your abilities. Yeah. I don't need to right now. Oh, and another thing. This robe that, that Garnet... Oh, hi, Red, right hi, Red Mage. No, it's White Mage. No, this is White Mage, Red yeah. Mages oh, have the, the fancy hat. 
You're right. Yeah, right. and and you can you can run into like random NPCs that are red mages. Yeah. Like they're not even subtle about it. Their NPC name is Traveling Red Mage. <laughs> yeah. It's like I want you in my party. Why won't you join my party? <laughs> Come on. This is like join. the only thing I really wish they that Nine did have because not for nothing, I love this appearance of Garnet, the white mage robe. And I kind of wish you, I could take you it wish with you could me. wear it. Yeah. yeah, I wish I could, I wish I can like switch costumes in the middle of the gameplay so I can have her wear this because it looks so adorable. Doesn't Garnet maybe eventual come? remake in about fifteen years? Well, actually, <laughs> you know, I to to be honest, I prefer my RPGs on handhelds. Um, that's yes. just kind of how I am. I think that you could probably make this game using the Bravely Default engine and it would work. Like I actually, I think I just saw on Twitter earlier today. That they were remaking the the first second in Detsu or Final Fantasy Adventure using the Bravely Default engine. So you know, I'd be totally down for that. Um, oh wait, hold on. I I know that I turned I turned off the screen so I could check my Twitter to find that that post, and then I heard that fucking music. It's these guys. These Zorn guys. and Thorn. I love their theme though. <laughs> these assholes. Zorn and Thorn have a great theme. I just don't like them as characters at all. They're annoying assholes, well, which is what they're supposed to. Yeah. Be. So they do their job. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like they spent a they spent a, a they spent a boss fight later on. Well, yeah, they spent a minute here on this joke. Like, the, 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 you know, it's a good establishing cutscene. Uh, it's just that the joke kind of runs its course pretty quickly. Well, there like, that it, is not the right way. Also, not the right know, way. I know. It's it, it's it's fitting because they're jesters, which usually only have like one joke anyway. So. <laughs> uh, fucking chuckles. <laughs> the pie to the hey face guys, did not why work. Why don't we spend face the entire the next part? Work. Why don't we spend the entire next part playing the game? Oh, no. oh! The, the, I thought you were talking about the when you think about it, you lose game, which is stupid. But it's... no, not that, not that game. It's the other the, game. The game in Ultima is like you can't say words with a specific. You already lost. Oh, it's <laughs> one syllable words, is it? Um. Yeah, I and I lost by saying the word already. God damn it! This game is hard. <laughs> this game sucks. Someone play anyway, Final Fantasy Nine. Th this is where we're introduced to Beatrix, who has who you think is going to be your your, your recurring mid game boss sort of like Genova was in Final Fantasy 7 because she has her own boss theme but she sort of stops being a, an adversary very early on in uh disc 2 or 3 now so what's interesting here like, is that a uh, Steiner here is actually uh you can actually uh, name him Adalbert, so you'll just say Adalbert, Adalbert all a lot. Because he <laughs> refers to himself by his full name more than any other character, I believe, in like this entire game. <laughs> it's like the Mario Mario fiasco. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just funny to do sometimes. I got yeah. you. 